Folks, we're back. This is Steve Sanson and our special guest host, Vem Miller with Veterans in Politics. Today we have Jason Gunnell. He's a candidate for North Las Vegas Municipal Court Judge. Before we get to Mr. Gunnell, Vem, you have any? You know, I, I really rants? don't have any rants. No, no, I'm just I'm looking forward to talking with Jason. I know he's running a grassroots campaign out there. I see him hustling every day and mm -hmm. just looking to, you know, find out a little bit more. All right, we'll go right into it. Yeah. Mr. Gunnell, tell us about yourself. Well, Thanks for having me, first of all. I appreciate Absolutely. coming out. Um, appreciate coming out. I'm a veteran as uh, uh, Air Force. Ooh. So Were you a JAG? I am. I'm, I still am. So I'm a reservist right now. So okay. I did. So you're still active? I did. Well, reserve, reserve yeah. 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 So eight years active duty okay. and got a little more than almost five in the reserves right now. What was your rank in the, what's your rank now in the it's, Air Force? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel. Oh. So, good. yeah, Snatchy. so you do all kind of legalese and get get uh, Air Force um, airmen out of trouble or you put them in trouble. You prosecutor. The yeah, I'm a prosecutor, little, little right? prosecutor. Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah. Done all, yeah, I've done a little of everything in the Air Force. But what, why did you get into the JAG program? What made you go into that area of law? No, I mean, in that area of specialty in the Air Force. I think everybody, well, I was in law school and, um, you know, a lot of vets, I think I can relate to them. You don't know what you want to do kind of in the future, but you want to serve your country. And I went to law school out in Southern Illinois, but I'm from originally from Idaho. Okay. And I didn't have like my dad or a family member or anybody else, a law firm I could go to or somebody I could, you know, fall back on. So you know, and always wanted to serve my country. So that's one reason I decided to go into the JAG Corps. It just yeah. worked out. And that's what brought me here to Las Vegas, North Las Vegas. So you were stationed at Nellis? Correct. Huh. And you're still stationed at Nellis in the Correct. JAG program? Yeah, I can't get away from Nellis. <laughs> do you live close to Nellis? I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. A few years ago, uh, the, the, there was um, a municipal court judge named Catherine Ramsey, and they wanted to oust her out of the seat in North Las Vegas. So they're, they're getting all these signatures to recall her. Supreme Court came down with a, uh, uh, an opinion saying that you can't recall judges. Although judges are elected, but they're the only branch that you cannot recall. You can recall everybody else, but can't recall the judge. How do you feel about that? Hmm. That's a that's a tough question. I mean, I got one better than that, but <laughs> <laughs> I, it's tough because you. I think as a judge, you try to follow the law as close you can, right. and. You know, if the legislature, without looking at the law or anything, I don't know how they came down with that decision, you know. But I think that the important thing is, you know, whatever the legislature, what is out there. And I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't aware there was some sort of exception for judges. Right. But, you know, I think that's that's where you need to follow the law. So okay. I have another one. So now North Las Vegas got rid of that seat. OK, now, because it was two mini seats, they got rid of the, the second one, the one that Catherine Ramsey was mm -hmm. in. So they got rid of that seat after they found out they couldn't they couldn't recall her. So they got rid of the seat. They don't need it anymore because the population. We don't need it. OK. And, and that's the first. I've never heard of a municipality want to get rid of a judicial seat. They usually want more, 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 not less. So now you got um, Chris Lee. OK, um, just to the piece in North Las Vegas who lost his seat to um, Belinda Harris. So now North Las Vegas says, OK, we got a job for you. And they arbitrarily put Chris Lee as a municipal court judge in, in, in that seat that they say they didn't need anymore without going to the public, without doing a um, 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 judicial selection committee like how everybody does. They do the judicial selection committee. You pick a, a, um, three names, you send it to the municipality, which would be the North Las Vegas City Council and the body votes on it. But they didn't do that. They just pick somebody arbitrarily and put them in the seat. How do you feel about that? 
Sounds like you got a good deal. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 mean I, I don't know the, all the facts that went into it. I, right. I, I mean, that's the biggest thing. I don't know how that all all happened. You know, that like what you said, the experience, I, what I've seen. You know, as what you talked about, I know for district court judges, there's a selection prop. People put in applications, just, you know, and it's the governor picks and county. It's the county commissioners. And I'm assuming for municipal court to be the city same council. as city council. Yeah. So, I'd, yeah, I don't know how. Kind of bypass yeah. the city council. <laughs> yeah. Bypass the judicial yeah. selection committee. <laughs> I don't Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's a. Win for Chris, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> but good thing, thank God for the ACLU. They finally stepped yeah. up and did something. <laughs> they did something and put and made sure that's on the ballot now. Yeah. But um, so, Mr. Gunnell, why do you want to run? Why, why do you want to be a municipal court judge in 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 um, North Las Vegas of all places? Well, <laughs> well, I guess it's where I live, so that's number one. Okay. I've lived there, so I lived there since well, 2007 when I came on active duty. We lived there with my family, and then we moved in 2010, and I was reassigned to McDill in Florida. And I never thought I'd come back to Las Vegas, right. but then I got another son back here in 2012, and we moved back to North Las Vegas. So it's been my community. It's my it's my home. I got a little North Las Vegas pride too. We're right. like the you know, we don't get as much I don't know anything as Las Vegas or Henderson. Why is that? It's it, we're just a smaller community. You know, it's just and I've always liked the underdog role, I guess. So okay. so and then um, municipal court. See, I I don't know that what happened with Chris Lee. I with the whole thing, him being appointed. But what I I did like is they were starting the community cares court. Mm -hmm. And the way I understood it, it was more community focused court. Mm -hmm. And I'm more of a blue collar mm -hmm. guy. Like I rather be out, I, you know, it's kind of a cliche. Road, you sleep, you yeah, that's right. Yeah, with the people as mm -hmm. opposed to, um, you know, some people, their, their niche is making big ar arguments and in front of, you know, the Supreme Court or are doing, you know, big complex litigation cases. So municipal court, you're working with the actual individuals in the community. Right. And, you know, that's one thing I want to do. And that's kind of my niche. That's my personality. It fits me the best. And, you know, another thing is I know there's not they have the CARES Court, but they don't have a veterans, like a specific veterans program in North Las Vegas. And you guys know. They used to. They used to. And Chris Lee used to yeah. uh, head that in as a justice of the peace. And I think I think they do. I think Judge Huda, Kalani Hu does a little bit. And I don't know the dynamics of it, but I know the municipal. Kalani Hu? Kalani Hu. No. They do not have it. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I've seen, like talking and Henderson, they have a really strong court. And so trying to do something like that in North Las Vegas, where there, I mean, the VA hospitals there, there's a high percentage of residents. Nellis is there. Correct. Mm -hmm. so. And you got, you got the, um, the, um, the um, Army National Guard um, um, base off of Ranch Road down there off of Correct. North 215 there that, that are there in North Las Vegas. So you got all kinds of stuff that are military in North Las Vegas. So you'd want to head up the uh, veterans court. Correct, I would. Okay, what, what type of law do you practice? What's your specialty? So right now I'm a prosecutor with the attorney, Gen attorney general's office currently. Okay. So I'm, I'm pr primarily criminal law and that's, yeah, like you said, criminal in a sense because um, for municipal court, they don't handle civil cases. Right. So that's another reason I, right. I want to run that, you know. Okay. Go ahead, Vim. What are the things that, like, what are, uh, being in the system, what are the things that you'd want to see done a little differently and how you'd want to affect change in a direction that you see fit? So that a couple of things we've learned, one thing, well, a bunch, but we've learned in COVID is that you can have hearings on Zoom or they call it blue jeans. So you don't necessarily have to disrupt somebody's life and this is municipal court so if you have a speeding ticket or something like that 
you're able to handle things online so that person's not out of work um, and you're able to handle things in a way that you don't you get business done but you don't disrupt their lives right. mm -hmm. and that's one thing i you know focus on and not wasting time like having people sit in your courtroom just waiting for the case to be called mm -hmm. and so the, there i think there's things you can do out there that streamline what the court can do and then what i've experienced in being on the campaign trail is and what I, one of my goals is, is actually take that time so I don't necessarily need to be on the bench so I can be on the bench, but get out in the community more. Mm -hmm. You know, step down off the bench, go out there and get out with, you know, there's a lot of Hispanics in North Las Vegas and, and get out in those communities, you know, African-American, all the communities, communities where, where they haven't had a, such a great relationship with courts and law enforcement in the past. But if you're out there and, you know, you're trying to interact with them and they think, well, this guy isn't that bad of a guy. And you let them know, hey, take care of your speeding ticket so it doesn't come a bench warrant um, now. And then you don't have to worry about get arrested or anything else right. down the road. And, and another thing that helps out with law enforcement, because you have officers who somebody gets a bench warrant for not paying their traffic ticket, their $200 traffic ticket or whatever, they have pull them over. Now they got to arrest them and take them into custody. And then mm -hmm. where they could have been using that time to, you know, arrest somebody real, you know, violent offender or things mm -hmm. like that. So that, yeah, no, those are some of the things I want to focus on. That's cool. You're, you're very uh, active in terms of campaigning. How's that going for you? It's going good. It's, it's, it's a, I don't know. It's it's kind of fun to be out in the community more, and that's one thing. When I was on active duty, and even my job now, it's really difficult to do because the state of Nevada right now doesn't pay me to go out and meet people. <laughs> like they pay me to sit behind a desk and like, you know, review cases and things like that. So that's that's one thing I I do like about. Um, getting out and meeting people and hearing their stories. I like hearing people's stories, um, you know, especially people who have had, had to overcome some something terrible, but they're 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 making it. You know, like the American. I know it's a cliche, but the American dream. They're making it something out of nothing. I think I think that's what's inspiring. And I would say, you know, there's what I've experienced is there's more good than bad out there, and. When we politically, which is kind of cool running for a judge seat, um, is I can go to, you know, Democratic events, Republican events, I can go anywhere. And I've noticed that most people, we're all, we all want the same thing, you know. Yeah. You know, we're just, you know, just 90, 80% of everything, we're just the same. And we're just, we just have a few things on the edge that we're all fighting over. But yeah, for the most part, we're all just trying to get the same thing, you know. So, so right, right now you're, you are a deputy AG. Correct. And you sit behind a desk. Correct. Kind of like appellate court, huh? <laughs> yeah. You should run for appellate court. Yeah, Those, no. You got two seats up in appellate court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I get back to being with the people. They're never with the people. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're That's true. Yeah. So, so um, <laughs> Mr. Gunnell, right now there, right now, judges, judges, um, there are no term limits for judges, okay? Uh, judges can't be recalled, okay? A lot of um, attorneys don't want to run against a judge because they're scared. Yeah. Because they're worried about their caseload. They're worried about, you know, because that's how they feed their family and that's how they keep the lights on. So they worry about, you know, judges' friends in other departments because they do team up. I've seen it happen many, many, many times. Although they say, oh no, we don't do that. No, that's bull, they do do that, okay? So in the last session, we came up with a bill called Remove and Retain. And the way it works is, um, it was introduced to the last session, in the last session, but it didn't come out of judicial committee because of the chairperson didn't want to let it out. So the way it works is that um, if uh, an incumbent makes it to the general election, OK, uh, uh, under their name is remove and retain. And if remove gets more votes, the seat's vacated end of the year. Uh, the uh, Judicial Selection Committee um, um, takes applications, um, sends three names to the governor, 
county um, sends three names to the county commission, sends three names to, to the municipality, depends on what level of judiciary they are on. And um, that body or that governor picks one of the three names. Okay. And then that person fills the vacancy and then that person runs for retention the next election year. How do you feel about something like that? That way we can get rid of the bad judges. Now, granted, if the judge is doing an awesome job, they got nothing to worry about. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, I know they do that in other states. They are. They do something similar to that. So, I mean, that's not a that's not a bad way to go. I mean, this process is pretty rough, so right. <laughs> I mean, right. I, I'm, you know what? I'm tired of seeing bad judges stay on the bench yeah. and it takes one vote to keep them on because yeah. they have no opposition. And, and, I'm, and I'm tired of um, gutless attorneys that want to run against them because of whatever the reason might yeah. be, you know, and it's just it's just pissing me off. <laughs> yeah. So so we got to do something about it. instead of talking about it. We got to do something yeah. about it. So so we did. And 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 I just trying to get people's opinion and find out how they feel about um, a, a law like that. Well, it is a, it is a way to I think it's a way to address the issues with judges because it is it's like kind of like the Wild West of uh, getting people voting and things like that. And when there's you know in 2020 there's over 60 judges right. on the ballot. So how do you pick the right one? I mean, it's almost impossible to get all the way through that. Uh, and what, sorry, sorry what, what seat are you running for? Or bo both seats, both muni seats are open, correct? Correct, for for number two. Which one is that? It's, uh, I'm running against an incumbent right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I, I know that the incumbent. Yeah. So that, well, yeah, and I've experienced that too, where people are- Well, they're both incumbent. One just got appointed and, and, one, and one was elected. <laughs> yeah. So which one are you running against? Uh, the appointed or the elected one? <laughs> the elected one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, I don't know if I asked this question early on, but I, I, maybe I didn't get the, the answer I was looking for. Uh -huh. Why do you want to be a judge? To, because that's a hard job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To make a difference, I think, to, in the community. And I mean, so I've been, I guess, blessed or gifted or I've had a lot of experience. I mean, I was in the military. I, I traveled the world, do I, literally the world, doing cases in the military, um, prosecuting cases. And I got phenomenal experience doing that, meeting the other people, um, as you know, be the, the skills you learn in the military, leadership skills, be able to deal with people who are different than you um, and getting along with others. Um, and then I did that. I'm currently work for the state. So I've been able to have the experience to travel the whole state, seeing other courts, seeing other things and how they how it works. And I, now I have like the the opportunity to take all that, all my stuff I've been able to do and focus it on the city of North Las Vegas, like my community and like that, like really get the grassroots. Cause one thing that's hard for me, well, the federal government's huge bureaucracy. So you change is extremely difficult at that level. The state is hard as well because you have to get through the legislature, um, like with your bill, I mean, stuff like that, it, it's it's difficult. But, and that one reason is municipal court is because there's five city council members. And the, what I've observed or hope, hopeful for is that we can we can actually move the court and the courts in the right, you know, progress, you know, we can get some, so like, like right now in North Las Vegas, they really don't have like, a, like you would call a probation program or things like that, or people who you can get them on monitoring, like you can get them on, you can get them a caseworker and try to get them to go to work, but then you also have them um, showing up for court hearings, like, you know, mental health court and things like that. And I think at the point the city council is, well, there's less people you have to talk to, first of all, to get those programs in place and you work with them. I mean, it's a separate branch of the government, but there's so much we could do. And it's it's at that grassroots level where you can affect change and change like individual people as opposed to, you know, the federal government is just, uh, I don't know, maybe I've given up on them. <laughs> Before Vim asks this question, I just want to say, I like I, I like your temperament. Mm -hmm. You look like you have judicial temperament yeah. if you was to take the bench. And you remind me of Marty Hastings, who's the 
um, Las Vegas uh, Municipal Court judge, and he runs Veterans Court, and he's retiring uh, this year, yeah. matter of fact, so it's going to be sorry to lose him, but that's who you remind me of, and, and I like the I like your temperament. I, I think you'd be good on the bench, not hot-headed. See, I, I, I couldn't be on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me come down there. Yeah. I'll pistol whip you real quick, and I'll yeah. knock some sense into you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, I'm curious, like, while you've been out there campaigning, talking with the community, have you learned anything that was that has affected how you perceive how to go forward I think well the big thing I've learned is that probably the value of getting out and being in the community mm -hmm. um, and the there there's the ability to do it like you can do it and you can good do outreach and you can be out there you know hitting up events and things like that and trying to talk to people. Can you give some examples of when you say like going out into the community and talking with people uh, of what you've been doing? So like there, there, there obviously there's a bunch of like, I guess, political events, but like one thing I was thinking of is um, Cano Health Insurance. They're, they started like their, their clinics and I, you know, I was able to go to like one of their open houses and they they are bringing healthcare to North Las Vegas to like a uh, Hispanic community at, that kind of like hasn't had that healthcare in the past. And you're able to go and you're able to meet these like senior citizens. Like one lady I call my abuelita because it's a, just so they're so loving and so like so sweet and so kind. But and they but they've never had anybody like in you know I'm running for a judge and they think I'm like this huge per, you know this great person just to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm just a person like you, but they see like the title or who you are. And so I think just being able to do things like that, or I went to a, a you know, North Las Vegas policing event or things like that, you know, they're just, there's like, they had a holiday party, you know, or, you know, the city puts on all these events and just trying to get out there and being out in the public and being with different people, so. You know, since I opened up the door about judicial temperament, tell us about it. How do you do you think that uh, judges should have judicial temperament and and uh, and uh, they shouldn't lose their cool? They shouldn't bring their bias. Uh, explain. Well, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I think you should you you should you should be able to set all that aside, you know, and 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 base the case on what is in front of you mm -hmm. and. Um, I, that's one thing, like it, as a judge, especially municipal court, cause you know, person Joe or whoever else in the world isn't going to be in front of a district court judge as a defendant or something like that. And so the, if you get, if you're in front of the judge or somebody like that, or the public, you have to like the integrity of the system, like we we talk about democracy in our you know united states like we're not this isn't like set in stone this isn't something like it, it, it's a fragile thing and, and if we don't all buy into this like the judicial system and like enforcement and those laws i mean this could go it could go fast yeah, yeah. you know so that that's that's part of it is holding the integrity of the system i think that's the reason it, you know, a judge plays a role in that. And you also, people, they always, they always talk about, you know, you mentioned Judge Hastings, like you can, you can be hard on a person or send a person to prison for what they've done, but you can also do it in a respectful way as well. Mm -hmm. So they know that, you know, you're not, you're not doing it because you, you're, you hate spiteful or something, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're doing it because this is your job and they, they understand it. And I think if we don't have the buy-in in the system, I mean, it, it, it gets crazy. It could get bad. So the, the be, being a municipal court judge, your, your maximum sentence for anybody to go to Jail will be six months, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Vem, you have anything? Um, not really. No, not right now. No. Because there, there was, there was another, um, there was um, a couple more questions I wanted to ask, uh, and I think one deals with: um, Have you had an opportunity to visit the North Las Vegas Detention Center? I haven't. 
you, you think you should like oh, yeah. take a little tour in there because I, if Casey sent somebody there, you know what I mean? No, I <laughs> no, I think, and I don't. I mean, this is. I'll probably make like staff mad at me, but, <laughs> but like the the core staff and stuff. But I think I don't. I don't see why there won't be a problem because with the the blue jeans, you know, and things like that. But as a judge, you could you could even go over there and have some of your court session, your hearings and things like that. Mm -hmm. But no, I think, yeah, I think absolutely. I think that's important to, <clears throat> to take the tour and to get to know the people over there and get to know like what is happening. Yeah, absolutely. Years ago, we um, we had a program called Shadow Judge Judge and uh, and uh, students, high school students was um, able to sit with the judge and and watch the proceeding. Would you be in favor to something like that and to mentor young minds? I believe um, Canyon Springs has a mock courtroom in their in their um, building. Would you be willing to like get involved with the community and, and, and try to mentor um, um, students and, and, and probably even get them to go to law school and and go to Boyd or anything like that. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that's one of the what a judge should do. You know, should be part of that. And I, I'd, I'd love. I mean, I was going to be a high school teacher before I went to law school, mm -hmm. so I'd love, I'd love to like go over there and and you know figure out the schedule and things like that. I mean, I think it'd be cool to even teach a class over there or something. You know, because mm -hmm. you got you got. I think that's one thing too. Um, you know, cause like I said, I've, I've, I've been blessed to have a real, I mean, I had great parents growing up, had, you know, was a, a good experience in the military, things like that a lot. And some kids aren't fortunate enough to have that in their lives. And so if you're able to help them get on the right path, um, you know, and in the right direction. I mean, that's that's like the best thing ever. I mean, and that's that's like preventative. You know, get them so they never have to be a defendant in a courtroom. You know, <laughs> and and that's the thing. That's I think that's one thing. The title, you know, of being a judge. It, it it's like we're, people. Some people think that I don't know. And it it it, it does something. <laughs> And so if you go over there and you pay attention to them and yeah, and I, I mean, I have interns all the time in my office and I, I'm like, I'll let them do as much as they want. Cause they got to get the experience, you know, like, you know, try to help them mentor them. But yeah, I, I think that's, I mean, that's our, I think that's part of who, if we want a society to succeed, we got to train the next generation. We got to bring them up. I mean, that's part of our, like, I don't know duties as humans i guess <laughs> i don't know did you have an opportunity to um go through boyd law no i went i went to i went to southern Illinois. no to, to just check it out oh I, i've been over there a couple of times okay how, how come they don't um have you come in there as a as a guest speaker professor or anything like that because they they have those types of um uh programs over there that you can go in there and you know talk to the students you know I've I've thought about that, mm -hmm. but I to be honest with you, I'd rather be like at a high school or a community college in a law school <laughs> to, to get them in there. Yeah, it's interesting, like about about high school. I mean, high school is a very kind of difficult place to teach. You're talking yeah. about being a teacher, and uh, I could see how your uh, your temperament yeah. would be good in that kind of an environment. I mean, what do you attribute that to? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't, I, my mom was a school teacher. I don't know. Because you're calm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, what triggers you? <laughs> Is there anything that makes you upset? <laughs> oh, just ask. Yeah, just ask my wife. <laughs> so, you have yeah, children? I do. How many? I have three. Okay. So, yeah. And, uh, and how old are they? So once 18, she's a freshman at Utah State. You got your gun ready for that one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she can trigger me. Um, <laughs> she knows how to, just ask her. She knows how to push my buttons. Um, and then I have a son. He's 17 and he's a senior uh, at Shadow Ridge. Shadow, okay. Yeah. And, then, and then I have an um, eight-year-old daughter. So okay. we have like a nine year gap. I mean, and it is a difference when, when you're a parent in your early twenties, as opposed to, 
Tell yeah. me about it. You're like, you, I don't know, so more, more relaxed and don't, you know, stress out as yes. much about your kids. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Were you always like this or? Um, I, yeah, I get, I don't know. Yeah. So what fascinates you about the judiciary? Um, that's an interesting question. I never really thought about it. It fascinates me. Um, I think I, it's probably the, it's probably the whole system of government okay. as a whole, I would say, um, just, just the three branches of government and how we're set up is mm -hmm. pretty, I mean, you know, when I was deployed in Iraq, I saw their, their court systems and how they, their system of governments and I've looked at other systems of governments and things like that. And just the, our whole thing, how it all works together mm -hmm. and how it should work too. Yeah. Cause sometimes it's not as functional as it should be. And I would say, you know, when you look at the founding fathers and sometimes they get a lot of, they get a lot of, for good or worse, you know, they get, they got a lot of digged on now, mm -hmm. but they put this in motion and we're always working we're towards perfection, mm -hmm. but we're not, we're never going to get there, but we're always, we're always moving in the right direction, I think. And that's, I think that's important to me to keep it, keep us going in the right direction. And how many chances would you give a, um, a litigant? that comes before your court. You know, they came in there on, let's say they came in there on petty theft, which, uh, before I get into that, yeah. uh, explain your jurisdiction as a municipal court judge, yeah. what, what you can do. So it's, so in North, La and specifically for North Las Vegas, it's a city of North Las Vegas. So it's just crimes, mainly crimes or ordinances, and there are a few other little things that happen there in North Las Vegas. So, um, and like you said earlier, the maximum punishment is six months. So it's only misdemeanors right. um, that come before a municipal court judge. So they're the, they're the minor offenses. Um, Jaywalking. Correct. Domestic violence. Correct. As long as there's no strangulation yeah, or yeah. weapons or anything like yeah. that, or no additional with yeah. CPS. Yeah. But, but um, assault and battery. Correct. And DUIs, first time, first right. DUIs. So that that's the... I guess the bread and butter of the, or what so, you can. So now we paint, now we painted uh -huh. a picture. So um, a litigant shows up with first DUI, right? You, you know, you follow the law, yeah. right? But you don't give the max. Yeah. Okay. A litigant shows up with a second DUI. Same litigant. You remember that litigant yeah. from last time. How many chances would you, are you willing to give before you, you 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 start to go on with the maximum sentence you could give <laughs> i think well the, part of that is too you gotta look the i want to know if i should come in your courtroom or oh not. <laughs> <laughs> well you gotta and i don't drink so yeah. it'll be something else <laughs> speedy. Um, maybe speed it yeah <laughs> i think you got you got to look at the facts and circumstances of every case and then judge them you know judge them individually um, because that's huge. And, and one thing I've learned um, throughout my life, you know, still learning, you know, when you're in your 20s, you think you know everything. And now I'm like in my 40s and I'm like, ah, I don't, you don't know. Nothing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like part of that is one one reason I think that the community court and, and trying this is my bit, you know, for the court is why ask the question, why are you in here with your second DUI? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Why? What's the underlying cause for this? Do you second thing? That's yeah. a good answer. Because yeah. if because <laughs> if you could you can't the DUI or the drinking is probably it's a band aid. Correct. So you're you understand yeah. because it could be. Yep. Um, I had had problems with my wife, yeah. or my 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 daughter ran away yep. and came back, or my daughter's with some crazy guy drugging her, and I don't know what to do, and I yeah. just started to drink. Uh, that, that's a good ask because th there's nobody, I haven't heard anybody answer it like that. Yeah. Because that'd be the best way to find the underlying problems. Yeah. yeah, what could you do in a situation like that? If somebody tells you, hey, I'm having a really hard time, my wife's cheating, this is why I'm drinking. I mean, what what do you do as a judge in that moment? Well, that's, that's the reason where I think that's, and you, you see it, the shift in the judicial 
This is where they get in the mental health court or we get into the treatment programs. And that's where you get them in something because that's that's the thing. You have to treat the underlying problem before the DUI go out. Now, granted, there are people who don't want to change or are forced to change. And if you have to force somebody to change, that's where you have to, you know, bring in the hammer on them. Or or the gavel. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> little baby gavel. Um, or I mean, but there are also crimes too. You you have to you have to balance that with society as well. Cause you also gotta if there's victims out there, and see that's the problem with DUIs is that I mean, we just had that that guy was going hundred miles an hour and, and killed the play. Yeah. yeah and, and things like that. So that that's the problem with DUIs is er, you have to balance that. And I think that's the reason the punishment's so stiff in DUIs is because of that, mm -hmm. those issues. But but your second one, all right. What's going on? Let's right. let's figure out if we can help. And, and some people don't want to change, but I think that that's where the question has to be asked. Like, what can we do to solve this problem? And domestic violence is the same thing. I mean, there's that interracial, you know, relationships, familiar and things like that. Um, and I, I learned that, like, because I, I prosecute a lot of sexual assault cases in the military. And sometimes the justice system isn't does it it's not equipped to handle things that need to be handled properly you know it's just it's just we don't have the tools right, right, right. <laughs> you know it's not made to do certain things like familiar relationship because if there's kids they're always going to be kids so how can we how can we make this work but protect everybody you know so i'm gonna give you two examples because homeless homelessness is probably huge in north las vegas mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> so in with, when it comes to homelessness and they come before you, um, it's probably going to be on a jaywalking. Yeah. Or it's probably going to be on a trespassing charge. How would you handle somebody that's homeless, that, that has these jaywalking charges and, 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 and trespassing charges come before you? How, how would you handle that? Yeah, I mean, that, go, that goes back to, like, what, how can, what can we do to figure out why are they doing this mm -hmm. and um because there's a lot of mental health problems in the homeless population yeah, there's a lot. um and it, it it's tough too because if you're a business owner and there's a homeless person defecating on your sidewalk every day like that's a problem, that's a problem. Yeah. so and, and, and another thing that hurts from, you know, morale is like, okay, so defecating, they get arrested, they call North Las Vegas PD, they come out and arrest him. He goes to jail and two days later, he's back out in the street defecating. So your morale problem with your, your officers, because nothing's really happening, mm -hmm. you know, the business owner suffering and this, this homeless, we're not really treating this homeless person. So I think that's where, that's the reason, one reason North Las Vegas is because I saw within the city council, they want to try to push that, you know, get the proper people. And that's what I, you know, I, I always, I always get excited though, you know, and I, I know there's, I got to look into what I can and can't do in my role because you don't want to cross those bounds in the legislature, but right. this is, you know, this is be something I would want to do or support if I can. What about um, prostitution? Um, cause they usually get them for a trespassing as well. Yeah. And, 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 and a lot of prostitutes, um, the only reason why they're doing what they're doing is because one, they're pimp Two, they have no, um, um, education to land them a job or they can't get a job because maybe they were a felon and nobody wants to hire them. So they go into the prostitution field or somebody's just forcing them to sex trafficking. Uh, how would, if, how would you handle somebody like that in front of you? So that, that's the they gotta want i mean this is the hardest part is because they gotta want to have they want to have be helped and i've handled prosecution like prosecute those kind of cases mm -hmm. and so that's the first thing is you have to get them well there's a there's a lot but you have to get them to the point where they want to have help mm -hmm. but i've also talked to like safe nest and um there's another there's another organization at it. Shade Tree. Yes. And in in Child Haven, I mean. It depends on the age, yeah. but but that but that's if you get a, can get them away from their pimp, 
and you can get them in a stable environment. And then I've also talked to other individuals who like. Well, before you continue, isn't there a law right now on the books to go after pimps? There a new law that changed a bit, I think a few years yes, ago. Yes, and I'm, I'm trying to think. I'll, I don't have it off my top of head. There is. There was, that was actually a, part of, we have a, like a, one of our deputy attorney generals does like sex trafficking and stuff and things like that. Yeah, and that was kind of, yeah, that was a push mm-hmm. um, coming out of our office. I'm curious uh, about your traveling, something that stuck in my head. So having traveled to Iraq and other countries, um, I guess this is a double-sided question. Have you, what have you seen that makes you appreciate our system? And have you seen anything out there that would maybe inform us on how we could do things better? So I our so our system, well, first of all, like the due process we get here um, is, you know, it, it, we have our issues, but like like the way i mean obviously we have our issues right but if you go to like for example in iraq i mean they were like the defendants were like in a room smaller than this like 80 guys you know no water no nothing um you know just horrible situation and then just not getting you know your due your due process rights or if you you know things like that um, and I, I think, so traveling the state, um, and another thing is the federal being in, coming from the federal in the air, in the military, mm-hmm. where federal law is very clear compared to Nevada law. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's so much easier to read federal law than Nevada law. Cause it's just, it's just the way it's written and is, it's not as clear. Is, is it too wordy the way they do it, things? It is, or is, it's not very specific. Mm-hmm. Um, and like for a big example in there, I think they're trying to work on it. It's like in, for jury instruction, jury instructions, if you're going to trial, like jury instructions are very important. That's like one of the things you want to look at first, if you're going to prove your case as a prosecutor. And so I was in, is in the military, I was always like, well, I'll start the jury instructions because that's what I have to prove my case. When I first started at the attorney general's office, I was like, where's our, do you guys have any jury instructions? So I see how to charge this case and like, we don't have any, we don't have any stock of jury instructions. So it's just that things like that. Um, but that that's, that's one thing. Um, one thing in the job that it kind of excites me too is that domestic violence trials, they're going to have jury trials in misdemeanor court. And I talked with uh, a little bit with Judge um, De La Garza, who's kind of putting that justice, she's a justice of the peace, and she's putting together kind of like a, a manual to do that and to, and to put that process in place. So for me, that's something that, like, you know, I don't know, maybe near and dear as a litigator is like, let's get a good process in place and then everybody do the same process. Like, so that way, if you're an attorney coming in and you have to defend a guy for domestic violence or whatever, you're worried, you're not worried about like, well, is the judge in a bad mood that day? Or like, does the judge like do things a little different? Is that gonna throw my game off? You can actually concentrate on your case. So that's that's some things like standardized and things like that I'd, I would want to do for the court, you know. Um, I had, we had uh, Clark County District Attorney Steve Wilson on back in July. And uh, he made a, a comment and he said, we're talking about Veterans Treatment Court. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, veterans are no different than anybody else. And I let it go, right? So went to his office and um, I asked him to come back on yeah. to to kind of talk about that and he was on a not nah, a few weeks ago and the way i described it um to his comment about veterans and is no different than anybody else i said a law en- i i was trying to rationalize between a law enforcement officer and a veteran and you be able to understand as being a veteran uh, a law enforcement officer um fires their weapon okay 
And, and you know, the, the job is different because a veteran goes, um, depends on what the veteran's mission is, search and destroy. But a, yeah. a law enforcement is always protect and serve, always protect mm -hmm. and serve, right? So I said, <clears throat> a law enforcement officer draws his weapon and fires it and hits uh, uh, an assailant, right? Mm -hmm. He's immediately taken off the street, right? Yeah. He, 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 six months or whatever, paid administrative leave, um, pending investigation, right? And um, that, that law enforcement officer goes through therapy. Got to meet with a counselor and find out if he's good to go to go back or she to go back on the street, right? Because the counselor has to sign off on it, make sure they're okay. But a veteran, especially a veteran in combat, every day in and out, firing their weapon, shooting their weapon, mm -hmm. have to destroy lives or, or seeing their brothers in arms, sister in arms dying in front of them, putting on tourniquets, blood going everywhere, buildings blowing up. Where are their, um, um, where, where, where are their counselors at? Where, where are their paid administrative leave at? Where, where, where are they taking off so they could get their mind back together again? It does, it's not the same for a veteran. So uh, the Veterans Treatment Corps program, I, I think it is gonna be an absolute necessity in North Las Vegas and but as a as a judge how could you go in there and say look we need this program now and I want to head it I mean uh, that's what I <laughs> that's essentially what I'd say I'd go in there and say we need this program now and I want to head it you know okay. um, no I and I agree because the, the thing I don't I mean you're a Marine. I mean, basically they take teach Marines to kill people for mm -hmm. four years. That's what you do. That's what your job is. Mm -hmm. And then they you get discharged. Some guy, you know, four years after you rump, you know, bodies are destroyed. And then you're supposed to not kill people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just come back yeah, and yeah, shake people's yeah. hands. Somebody spits in your face. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's not how it works yeah. with us. <laughs> Somebody spits in your face, you want to want to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but, I mean, that's that's the debt that's the the country owes to veterans because mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 it takes it it takes a toll. I think we need more judges that are vets. Yeah, we definitely need more judges that are vets because there's more and more. Um, men and women coming back, coming out of the military. Yeah. I mean, look what's going on now in the world. They're sending troops all the way to to Europe to just do stand by and help out our NATO country just in case something happens. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, even the thought of that, I mean, e even even when when you're going into combat, before you even go to combat, you're still a garrison. You're still you're still on uh, and me. I was still on Pendleton. Um, just thinking about you're going into a combat situation, not knowing if you're going to come back plays on your psyche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does, you know. So I think the better having veterans as judges is an amazing idea because I think yeah. you're so invested in having fought for this country to actually protect the Constitution, do things lawfully. Mr. Gunnell, um, do you have any uh, opponents? I, I well, that's a great question. Because I'm filled uh, with great questions. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, this guy. Yeah. Well, yeah. you could, you could just call me Jason too. You know? <laughs> we're, 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 we're professional, we're a professional yeah. show. Yeah. They told me not to curse anymore, so I kind of like. Mm. <laughs> no, I I don't. I know I'm running into department too, but because we talked about before, Chris Lee is he has to run now, and I I don't know if. He, what's going to happen in that race. So I don't know if people are going to jump over. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the incumbent is going to run right now. I've heard he's back and forth. Mm -hmm. So to tell you, that, I don't know. Well, um, I, I'll tell you this, Mr. Gunnell. I, I, I love your temperament. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're a veteran. I love the fact that you work with the AG's office. I mean, those are, those are, those are all good qualities to, in my opinion, to to sit on the bench and it's not like you're going for supreme court yeah. <laughs> you're going for muni which is the lowest of of all the courts mm -hmm. is the municipal court not saying that one day you probably run for jp or or district or whatever but until then right now you're running for muni and 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 i respect your your run for that office and i think you'll do great if you were to get elected to be in that seat 
Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Um, them, you have anything else? No, no. I, I, I love Jason's temperament. I love that he's a hustler. I, you know, like I said in the beginning, I, I see him out there really, you know, busting his ass. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, Mr. Gunnell, Jason, <laughs> Mark is going to zoom in on you. You right. tell folks why they should vote for you and, and why the other folks should not run in your race <laughs> <laughs> and your point of contact. All righty. All right. Jason got on running for Judge North Las Vegas Municipal Court Department 2. I am running to make a change in North Las Vegas. I'm running to bring the court back to the people and to serve the people as a public servant. I can be breached on Facebook if you Jason for Jason at Jason Gunnell, if you Google it, and then my um, website is Gunnell, the number four judge.com. So Spell Gunnell for them, please. G U N N E L L. So it's Gunnell for like guns, Gunnell mm -hmm. for judge.com. Thank you. Well, Mr. Gunnell, thank you so much for being on the program. Them, thank you for being a special co-host co today. I My appreciate pleasure. that. Yeah. Folks, that's Jason Gunnell. He is a candidate for North Las Vegas Municipal Court Judge. I mean, if you've been watching the show, this guy's temperament is right on, is right on. I, 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 feel, I feel warm and cozy with this guy. He's, I think that, I, I personally think that he should be on the bench. He's a veteran. He's passionate about what he does. And that's what we need. This is Steve Sanson, Vem Miller with Veterans in Politics. Until next time.